Hello, you wonderful people. In this video, we're going to take a look how I implemented this basic tap navigation in Next.js where I'm pulling my navigation dynamically from my headless CMS Strapi. So if you take a look at my content manager, we have this global page, which has a content type called header, which has all the necessary data that I need. I have my logo text link, which is what you see here, coding after 30, and I have two navigation items, including the call to action. What's awesome, you can add any additional menus very easily. For instance, I wanna add another page and we're gonna say it's going to be about, so it's gonna to go to our about route. The label is gonna be about. Is it external? No, it's not. And you could even set up different styles that you want. I'm gonna say primary, although in the top navigation, I'm not implementing it, but that's okay. I'm gonna click publish and once we navigate to our application and refresh, notice that we have our additional menu. What I like about this approach is that allows non-technical users to easily add new navigation items. And in other videos, I'm also going to show how you could do this with pages. So let's take a look at this project and see how I built it in code. And as always, you can always find this repo to take a look at it yourself. And if you haven't seen the previous video, you could check out the video building the same project, called Building Dynamic Website Landing Pages Next.js 15, where we talk about how to represent your dynamic content in Strapi. And if you're wondering why I'm doing it in the first place, so I started this side project where you could check out all the courses, and this was using Remix under the hood. And what I'm doing is I'm actually rebuilding this website using Next.js. And the reason why I'm rebuilding in Next.js is because I find where the state of React Server Components is and the uh, ease of use of being able to deploy this on Vercel just makes a little bit more sense for me. Don't worry, I still love Remix and I'll still make more courses. Another reason why I'm recording these short explainer videos is because I am really busy at work and I have hard time committing to continuing finishing uh, some of these courses that I am creating here to which I will get back and finish these courses. But in the meantime, while I'm trying to get my time straightened out, I wanna still record these shorter videos where I talk about basic functionality in Next.js and Strapi, which is a headless CSS that I'm using to build projects. So without any ado, let's first take a look at the project, take a look at our Next.js code, and then I'll show you how to pull this repo locally. So taking a look at our front end, if we take a look at our navigation here, we are going to break it down into a component. And this component is gonna consist of three different items. Number one, we're gonna have our logo text. Then we're going to have our navigation items. And finally, we're going to have a call to action. And because I was lazy, instead of building this component myself, I like to use Reweb. They're not sponsored, they probably should, I'm just kidding, but I love them so much, I use them anyway. So what I did, I ended up using the navigation example from here. So if we take a look at sections, take a look at headers, here we have the navigation, and this is the standard navigation that I used. So let me go ahead and add it so you could see it here. And I should probably move it to the top here where it belongs. So now that you know my secret, how if I don't have to build something from scratch, I don't, now that you know where the navigation comes from, I went ahead and exported this component into my code. In my project inside the client folder, under source, you will find the components folder that has all the items. This is under custom and it's the header component. I broke it down into a couple of different elements, but the gist of it, if you take a look at the header component, let me shrink it down here. Because we are able to use React Server components, I am able to make a request to my Strapi endpoint and just get the data for the top navigation that is consumed by this component. Once I get the data from my loader above, I am going to go ahead and just iterate through the items. So very basic navigation that is being set dynamically. I'm not only getting the nav items, I'm also getting my logo header, which I'm displaying here, and I'm doing the same thing for the call to action. And all of that is coming from our Strapi application from my global single type, which is currently responsible for displaying the header, but as I continue along, I'm gonna also have it responsible for the footer and initial SEO data that's global to the page. But if you take a look at the content builder, let's take a look how I build it. In Strapi, you're able to create components, encapsulate some sort of data structure. So 
Here I have a header component, and if you take a look, it consists of a reusable component that I created, which is a link, which has href label, is it external, and the style. And basically, for the header, we have the logo text, which is a link. Then we have nav items. It's a repeatable component because you're going to have multiple items in our navigation, and we're going to have our call to action. And like I said, this is a link component that I created here because I knew that I would need some sort of way to be able to represent the link in Strapi. So when building the header component, I build my header component from the link component, and then I build my globals page using the header component, which has all those items. And once I build that component, I was able to add that data by adding all my nav items. And once everything was done, I was able to publish it. And here in the settings, I'm able to expose each individual endpoint in Strapi for consumption. So under public, I went into global, I exposed my find that method, which allowed me to navigate to this website to get our data. So if I go to Strapi, 1337 at API local, you're going to see that I'm getting my items. If you're looking at this and you're kind of questioning what is happening here, I don't see all the items. I just see that you are getting the global page with title and description. So in Strapi, similar to GraphQL, we want to be very mindful of not overfetching or getting too much information that we need. So if we take a look at our page builder, we do have all these items, but we are only returning the title and the description. And that is why in our Next.js code, scrolling to the top here, we have a populate query that says, hey, can you please also populate the logo text, the nav items, and the CTA? And that way we're able to get all the data. Just to kind of show you that this works, I'm going to go ahead and console log the URL that href so we could get access to that string and I was able to get that console log off screen. So now when we navigate to that endpoint, notice we're getting all of our items. We're getting our logo text, our nav items, and our call to action, which is really cool. Once we get this response data from our Strapi application, we are just going ahead and passing it to its appropriate components. For instance, our link, we're navigating through our nav items and displaying the nav item, and we're doing the same thing for to call to action. So in this video, I just want to give a brief overview. One way that you could represent your top navigation data in Next.js with a headless CMS like Strapi. So you identify the data that you want to represent. In your Strapi application, you build a component to represent that data, which has an equivalent Next.js component that's going to consume it. And then you add that appropriate component to its appropriate page. You expose the endpoint via the permissions. So we gave it public permissions here and we were able to easily get the data. If you want to learn more about Strapi, my favorite headless CMS to use with any front-end framework, preferably Next.js because it's awesome, you could go to strapi.io website and check it out. You could visit our documentation or you could actually get a free demo where you're able to enter your information and they'll spin up a server both both for your front end and Next.js and your Strapi backend. That way you don't have to set anything up on your computer. You could just jump in, try it out, or you could pull the repo if you like. And if you ever want to hang out and chat, Strapi has a Discord service where they hold open office hours. I hang out during the 12, 30 p.m. session. So if you want to stop on by, say hello, you could go ahead and do that. So now let me show you how quickly you get started with this repo. So if you go to the link to this repo, which is going to be in the description below, you could click get the code. I always use GitHub CLI because it makes it easier, but you could just do uh, get clone and provide the HTTPS request. Once you have that link, go ahead and paste it. It's going to go ahead and do its thing. It's going to pull the repo, then CD into that repo. And I have a very helpful script. You just run yarn setup. It's going to go ahead and install dependencies, both for the Next.js frontend and Strapi backend. Once everything done, you could run yarn seed to install the demo data that I have. Once everything is done, you could run yarn dev to start both your Strapi backend and your frontend. When Strapi starts for the first time, you're going to be asked to create your first admin account that is local to your computer. I'm going to go ahead and quickly do that. 
And most importantly, because this is local, you could use secure passwords like monkey1234 because it is the most secure password available. Click, let's get started. And you're going to be greeted with your admin area. And because of the previous video, we have previous data here. As you could see here, we created our homepage and our blocks from previous video that I'll make sure to link again in the description above or below. And more recent, our global data here that has our header data that we're able to pull from our endpoint. And of course, you could see your front end by going to localhost 3000 and you're going to see your newly pulled project. So I'm going to continue to build it out. Instead of showing complete tutorials, I'm just gonna show these overview videos. I will get to the tutorials when I have more time, but I still wanna share with you the things that I'm building and doing. And again, the goal for me right now is to rebuild this current Coding After 30 website that I have using Next.js. And if you like this video, hit the like. If you disliked it for whatever reason, you can do whatever the heck you want. I'm going to keep making these videos regardless if you like it or not. But hopefully if one of you found it useful and interesting, thank you for giving me your time. Even if you did it, thank you for giving me your time anyway. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks and bye.